Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, and this is episode 30 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. And today I'm going to be answering your questions on DSG transmissions. Now, before we get into the questions, a uh, really quick note about the blog. I was having some issues with it this past weekend, so if you posted a comment on any of the posts, um, it probably got deleted, so if you don't hear back from me, post it again. Uh, actually, as always, if, if you email me or something and you don't hear back from me within a day or two, Fire me another email. It may have gotten lost in the spam file or, uh, or something like that. Um, if you have a question for a show like this, um, where I answer you know, the things you guys want to know about, shoot me an email to charles at humblemechanic.com and make sure you put something like question for Charles in the subject line so that I know what the email is about um, and that you're not just emailing me just you know to say hi or whatever, which is awesome and I appreciate that. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I actually had Jason from Engineering Explained over to my house the other day. Uh, we had a few beers, hung out, shot some really cool video on DSG transmissions. Now we went over a lot of the nuts and bolts and how they work and how it's able to, you know, essentially be in two gears at one time. That video is not out yet, but um, if it is, there's a link right here, right here to it. And uh, be sure to check that out. I will let all of you guys know when that video hits because I think it's going to be awesome. And um, Jason's a great guy. If you don't follow his YouTube channel, you're one of like four people that go on YouTube and don't follow him. And a good buddy of mine, so check him out, Engineering Explained. I'll have links to all of his stuff in the show notes for you guys today. Um, the way I did this is I posted a question on Facebook and said, hey, you got DSG questions? Post them here and, uh, you know, I'll answer them. So we're going to go ahead and get rolling. First question comes from Drew. Drew's got like a seven-part question, so nice job sneaking that in, Drew. Uh, he asks, do I use the factory bottom fill tool for the DSG fluid change, um, or do I fill it from the top? I do fill it from the bottom, but I don't use the factory tool. Um, he says that the factory method sucks, and I kind of agree if you have another way to do it. We actually have a, um, an electric-powered machine at the shop, that we pump, we pump the fluid in from the bottom, but it pushes it up through um, with an electric motor, uh, not just the, you know, where you hold the bottle up high, the, the gravity method. So it fills it in just a few minutes and it does an incredible job. Um, I did a video with Paul from DeutschAutoParts.com um, showing how to do that with a similar tool to the factory tool. And it definitely takes some time. So, um, you know, thankfully we don't have to use it. We just do them at such a volume in the shop that, uh, you know, it would it would be a huge backlog to uh, to do it with the factory tool. It works. Um, if you don't have any other way to do it, it's fine. It's just when you're trying to be efficient, you know, as efficient as possible, it's really not the best method uh, to do it. And like I said, we do them all the time. And I would say 70% of the time, the customer's in the uh, waiting room waiting. So, um, that would, uh, that would definitely eat up a bunch of time. Uh, like I said, he asked like an 18 part question. So Drew, I'm going to answer all of your questions. Um, he asked if there's any tips on changing the fluid at home. Like I mentioned, I did a video with Paul. I'll put a link to that in the show notes for you, Drew. He's already got the tool. So that's awesome. Um, he said he had one shop tell him that they just put five quarts in and then cap it as fast as you can. Uh, you, five liters is actually more correct than five quarts. Five quarts is a little bit overfilled. Um, there's a lot of debate on, on this and the official Volkswagen way is to bring the temperature of the transmission fluid up to 35 degrees Celsius and pull the first drain plug and have a small amount trickle out. Um, in the real world, I can tell you that doesn't happen every time. Um, like I mentioned a minute ago, we typically have customers waiting in the shop uh, or in the waiting room. So, you know, it would take hours and hours and hours to let a hot transmission cool all the way down and then to monitor the, the fluid temperature as we bring it up to 35 degrees Celsius. Um, and if you don't have a scan tool to properly monitor the fluid temperature, it, it doesn't really do you much good anyway. Um, five quarts may actually be all right if you're using that factory tool because I think you're going to lose a little bit more unscrewing it out of the bottom versus the way, you know, I do it at the shop. Um, overall, I don't know that half a cup of fluid difference is really going to matter unofficially. Officially, it has to be set to the proper level every time. Um, but just based on my experience, I've done a ton, a ton, a ton 
a ton of DSG services and uh, haven't, knock on wood, went, knock on wood, ran into a problem yet. So I pump five quart, or excuse me, five liters in, um, a little bit drips out enough to where I feel really good about the fluid level. If you're never, if you're not sure about getting the right level in, what you can do is when you, when you drain that fluid, Drew, um, measure it. Just put it in a container, measure it, mark it, dump it, you know, recycle it, and then, um, and then go back in and fill basically, you know, make sure you're putting that same amount back in. So, um, great questions, man. Good job sneaking a bunch in. I appreciate that. Stuart asks, what's the clutch wear life? Well, that's a great question. I don't know that there's a mileage, just like a manual transmission, there's not a mileage that a clutch is going to wear out. I've seen DSGs with over 300,000 miles on them and they've had nothing but filter and fluid changes. I've seen DSGs fail at 20,000 miles. So, you know, there's really not a definitive, it's this mileage that you got to start worrying about it or it's this mileage that it's going to fail. Um, it is, I hate to say it, luck of the draw, but it's kind of luck of the draw. So, you know, you, you may experience things early on and I know in like the, uh, maybe 06 to 09 range when there was more DSG, they were first coming out, and it may have even been a little later than that. Volkswagen had recalls on them to replace the, uh, the mechatronic unit. Uh, that fixed a ton of them. There were software updates that fixed a lot of them. And um, I found that the ones that people are really good on maintenance, Stuart, um, really tend to, tend to hold out a little bit longer. But there is not a mileage that I found that you really need to start worrying about the clutch pack. All right, we're going to keep going. Uh, <laughs> Brandon has pretty much the same question. Will you have to replace the clutches at a certain mileage? Uh, like I said, Brandon, I don't, I don't really think there's a mileage. Um, I have seen a handful of clutch packs fail, but it's not nearly as common as uh, mechatronic units were, especially early on in the DSGs. Neil asked, what does Hop Ranch have to do with DSGs, which was the beer I was drinking when Jason came over? Um, nothing, Neil, it's just delicious. And you being a beer guy, um, I know you can appreciate that. So uh, today I got a local beer from Carolina Brewing Company. If you guys are interested, awesome beer, Wigo, check it out. If you can, if not, sorry, they don't distribute all over the country. So they're just a local thing for me. Christian asks, why can't they figure out the hesitation at start or the awkward jerking motions at slow speeds or in stop and go traffic? Um, I don't know why they can't figure that out. I think some of it is because it is a manual transmission that is controlled electrically. It's not an automatic transmission. And when you think about it that way, and Jason and I really go into this um, in the video that, that you guys need to check out, um, you understand why some of these things happen and it makes more sense when you see, you know, that this is essentially the same gear set a manual transmission would have. And uh, some of that stuff, you know, really comes to light. Some of it's just the nature of the transmission. Um, some of it can be overcome by driving it in sport mode where it'll hold the gear a little bit longer. But there is just a little bit of difference to a DSG transmission versus a traditional um, automatic transmission. So uh, just keep that in mind that it is a manual transmission that you don't have to shift. And a lot of that really makes sense when you compare it to a standard five or six speed transmission. Um, Andrew asks, why does his 08 GTI after putting in park still move forward? Okay, um, I'm gonna hopefully have a screenshot up right now showing you exactly why that happens. Um, it has to do with the parking engagement there's actually um an arm that engages a piece on the differential and um, you'll see how it locks in and that does allow for a little bit of movement um, when 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 you put it in park again think of it as like you put it in first gear while when you came to a stop or when you parked your car and it basically does that same thing all right, Manny asks, is the DSG pattern after the PDK in any way, shape, or form? PDK is actually Porsche's version of a direct clutch uh, gearbox. It's actually very, very, very much the same, Manny. And actually, to be fair to you guys, I had to look up what PDK was so, uh, so that I made sure I gave you guys good information. Yeah, man, it's pretty much, you know, it's probably 80% the same design. I haven't looked up manufacturers or anything, but yeah, um, very, very, very similar. Uh, Paul asks, with replacement of the clutch pack, would I replace the trans cooler at the same time? 
Probably not unless there's fluid contamination. Um, if there's fluid contamination, either cross contamination between coolant and gear fluid, or um, you know any other contamination, metal in the system, anything like that. Yes, I would. If there's metal in the system, honestly, it's getting a gearbox. Um, but otherwise, I probably wouldn't replace the cooler. Uh, that doesn't overlap in quite the way that I think I would want to do it. Uh, Robert said he needs his DSG on his Mark IV. Some of the Beatles had the DSG in uh, in the late 0405, something like that. Um, good question, Robert, and good choice on beer. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cameron asks, why are they taking over four manuals? Um, why can't I have a manual option in every model? Because, man, like me, you're kind of a rare bird in the, uh, in the world of overall automotive. You know, I think as enthusiasts, we get hung up on, we want manuals, we want manuals. Well, um, I can tell you there's a ton of people that don't ever want to drive a manual transmission. Um, this kind of gives you some performance, but doesn't make you have to do any work. Uh, I agree though, manual transmissions are awesome and um, I love them. That being said, I do drive an automatic every day, but it's also nice to just put it in park and, uh, you know, cruise control on the way to work. Good question though, man. I agree with you. <laughs> he did say it was more of a rant than a question, so that's fair. Fred says he's putting a DSG in his Mark I Golf without the ABS pump will. The launch controls still work. Dude, I don't know, but that's awesome. And when you get that done, I hope you send me some pictures because I really want to see that uh, and some video of, uh, of you driving it because that's cool. Um, I don't see why the launch control wouldn't work, but man, I don't, I don't know. Um, I guess that is driven by the ABS layer, controlled by the ABS, so maybe not. Um, you're a pioneer, man. Good luck. I hope that works out for you. So uh, keep us all posted on uh, on what happens. All right. Dwayne says he's a VW service rider. Awesome, man. Thanks for being part of the community. That's cool. He can answer most of the questions, so he'll have to just watch the video that Jason and I did. Um, Eric says engineering explained rocks, and Eric the car guy as well. I agree on both points. Two of my favorite people in the space and good buddies of mine. Love those dudes. So. Um, Thanks for mentioning them. They are both awesome, and uh, and I like them both. And uh, again, both good buddies of mine. So pleasure to call them friends. Anyway, guys, great questions. Um, I know I talked a lot about the video that Jason and I did. And if you're watching this the day the video this video comes out, it's probably not out yet. But as soon as that hits, I'll make sure and let you guys know. So keep your eyes and ears open for that. Um, as always, thank you for all the likes, shares, and subscriptions. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Don't forget you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as YouTube. If you have any questions further about the DSG, post them in the comments below. And again, be on the lookout for that video that Jason and I have already filmed. He's got the big task of editing all the probably dumb stuff that I said and, uh, you know, making sure that I turned my microphone on. So uh, again, one more thing. If you have any questions for a show similar to this, shoot me an email, charles at humblemechanic.com and put question for Charles or something like that. You know, question for Charles is really the best thing. That way I know what the purpose of the email is. I can put it in a separate folder and uh, make sure I answer you guys' questions. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.